In this training, I'll be covering site issues affecting multiple machines. There may be cases where multiple machines on the same site are experiencing the same fault symptoms. Possible causes could be problems with the base or base setup, radio interference, GNSS interference. Base issues. Poor base location or setup could impact on machine performance. Ensure the base is located in a position with a clear environment with an open view of the sky. Avoid any obstructions which may cause multipath. Avoid sources of electromagnetic interference. The separation distance between the GNSS antenna and data radio is recommended about two meters. Ensure the base radio antenna is located in a good position to give sufficient radio coverage to the site. RTK accuracy degrades and initialization time increases when operating at a greater distance from a base. Radio interference. Radio interference occurs when the signal from one device affects reception to another. It can occur when devices are operating on the same frequency or near to the frequency. The effect can cause interference and the device to be jammed affecting the receiving signal. Radio interference may occur all the time or can occur intermittently at certain times of the day. Depending on the source and strength of the interference, it can occur widespread on the site or only specific areas. Check the radio is on the latest firmware version. Attempt to identify possible sources of radio interference. Check for amateur radio or TV installations or other site base stations. Try a different radio frequency or correction source. Confirm if operating the machine closer to the base reduces the effects of the interference. CSG test week can be used to check that the radio is receiving valid information from the base station. For further assistance, contact the radio spectrum management in your region. With the use of spectrum analyzers, they can investigate the possible source of the interference. GNSS interference. Even though the various satellites transmit in dedicated frequency bands, there are many RF signals which are emitted just next to the GNSS frequency bands. Some of those signals spill over into the GNSS bands, impacting on the quality and accuracy of the position, and sometimes even drowning out the GNSS signals completely. Interference may be constant or only occur at certain times of the day. The interference may be widespread or only occur at selected locations on site. Radio or radar emissions directed at the GNSS antenna will cause degradation in signal quality. Ensure the GNSS receivers are using the latest firmware. Attempt to identify possible sources of GNSS interference. Identify when the interference is occurring and the duration. Confirm if the interference is affecting the full site or isolated to specific areas on site. It may be required to enable data logging at the base and machine receivers when the problem is occurring. Information to provide to support. Provide a detailed description of the problem and how it is affecting the site. When does the problem occur and the duration? Are there any possible sources of interference close to the site? How long has the issue been occurring? Provide base information, including the type of base used and firmware versions, type of base corrections, details of constellations enabled at the base, and the location of the base, it can be helpful to provide photos of the base setup. Machine information. Give details of how many machines are on site, the number of machines that are affected, machine information including make, model and serial number of machines, type of systems and system versions for each machine. Confirm that GNSS receivers and radio are on the latest firmware versions. Take Z-snaps from the affected machines when the problem is occurring. If possible, take the Z-snaps close to the same time from each machine. If machines are working and are not affected, take a Z-snap again close to the same time from the unaffected machines. Write a simple test plan to help organise the information, including the Z-snap number, include a description of what was occurring when the Z-snap was taken, the machine details. Organise the test data 
ensuring the ZSAP information from each machine is grouped into individual folders. Sending multiple ZSAPs from multiple machines with no context or organisation will increase the time in diagnosing the problem. Important information may be missed. Ensuring that data is documented and organised from multiple machines will assist in understanding the problem and speed up the support process.